Well, hello and welcome to the Cyber Safety News Show here on the Safety News Network. My name is Adam Blue, and each week I'll dive into the world of cybersecurity to share some of the latest hacks that are going on, vulnerabilities, and also ways you could protect yourself. That usually comes out of the news stories of these vulnerabilities. Uh, in fact, for today, we're going to talk about a new exploit that has to do with a Microsoft product and a patch that needs to be uh, installed, and we'll get to that. Uh, also, kind of around what some of the the pros in the cybersecurity realm are expecting to happen in 2024 when it comes to ransomware. What are some new technologies that hackers could potentially be using? It's always interesting because cybersecurity experts always have to try to keep up and as fast as possible jump uh, to the next uh, piece of technology they can find to remediate this. And so it'll be interesting to see what they say. Um, and then, yeah, there's ways that uh, hackers have discovered to access Google accounts without a password. And we'll cover that. Um, but first, let's actually get on the news about uh, the Microsoft SharePoint vulnerability, because you could be saying, Adam, that sounds scary. What should I be doing right now instead of watching this? Well, you should watch this, but also uh, I'll, I'll jump into the details. Let me put on my reading glasses. Act now, CISA flags active exploitation of Microsoft SharePoint vulnerability. The U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, has added a critical security vulnerability impacting Microsoft SharePoint Server to its known exploited vulnerabilities catalog, citing evidence of active exploitation. We've talked about that before where we see like CVE and a bunch of numbers, and that's actually like the official way to categorize these different exploits. All right, and this CVS score is 9.8. Uh, is a privilege escalation flaw that could be exploited by an attacker to gain administrator privileges. Microsoft released patches for the bug as part of its June 2023 Patch Tuesday update. So interesting that this is something that was known and was patched, presumably. An attacker has gained access to spoofed JWT authentication tokens can use them to execute a network attack which bypasses authentication and allows them to gain access to the privileges of an authenticated user, Redman said. The attacker needs no privileges, nor does the user need to perform any action. Security researcher Wen Tian Gang, Jang, uh, apologize, apologize for that, but I'm trying my best, uh, of Star Labs SG demonstrated an exploit for the flaw at a pwned to own Vancouver hacking contest last year, earning a $100,000 prize. Um, that's very interesting. So, again, this kind of goes to some previous videos where I've covered uh, hackers that are able to uh, win prize money by finding exploits so that they can be fixed. The pre-authentication remote code execution chain combines authentication bypass with a code injection bug, the latter of which was patched by Microsoft in May 2023. The process of discovering and crafting the exploit chain consumed nearly a year of meticulous effort and research to complete the full exploit chain. Uh, uh, noted in a, I'm not going to try the name, uh, a report published in September 2023. Additional specifics of the real-world explanation uh, of the critical vulnerability and the identity of the threat actors that may have uh, been abusing, that may be abusing them are presently unknown. That said, federal agencies are recommended to apply the patches by January 31st, 2024 to secure against the active threat. So if you want more information on this or the click on the links they provided, uh, this will be uh, in the description below, but um, just kind of interesting, another example of any piece of software can have a flaw that then attackers try to make use of to get whatever actions done they want. So it's really just about always patching, updating, and I know SharePoint's big. SharePoint is huge. So this is for all of you out there that probably use SharePoint. <clears throat> Moving on, uh, hackers discover a way to access Google accounts without a password. That Sounds scary. Security researchers have uncovered a hack that allows cyber criminals to gain access to people's Google accounts without needing their passwords. Analysis from security firm CloudSCK found that a dangerous form of malware uses third-party cookies to gain unauthorized access to people's private data and is already being actively tested by hacking groups. The exploit was first revealed in October 2023 when a hacker posted about it in a channel on the messaging platform Telegram. The post noted how accounts could be compromised through a vulnerability with cookies, which are used by websites and browsers to track users and increase their efficiency and usability. Google authentication cookies allow users to access their accounts without constantly having to enter their login details. However, the hackers found a way to retrieve those cookies in order to bypass two-factor authentication. Um, we routinely, uh, routinely upgrade 
and def- and uh, we I'm sorry we routinely upgrade our defenses against such techniques uh, and to secure users who fall victim to malware. In this instance, Google has taken action to secure any compromised accounts detected. So you know, uh, in in and I guess I was about to say this, but they say this next: users should continue to take steps to remove any malware from their computer, and we recommend turning on enhanced safe browsing in Chrome to protect against phishing and malware downloads. Because that's the thing: you could be innocently just surfing the web on Wikipedia, accessing a link. And you know how we've learned recently that really any place you go could have some hidden malware that downloads on your computer. Once that's downloaded on your computer, it can then potentially get access to your cookies. And these cookies, uh, not the chocolate chip variety, uh, but these cookies actually contain your like sign-in state and your authentication information. And that could be leveraged by an attacker to be able to continue to access your information without the password needed. So that's kind of the thing to think about. Why is malware bad to be on a PC? Well, it's because with some sort of program or app or something that's malicious downloaded on your PC, there's functions within that that are to access kind of your your saved or login sessions for various apps um, and programs, and then can use that to get in, bypassing passwords, bypassing two-factor authentication. So not only should you be careful about what you're downloading, because really you never know. Again, an attacker could come up with some new way to get a download for you, a malware. But also, just be careful what you're downloading. Um, always keep uh, your browsers up to date, especially, you know, like Chrome. Um, in, in the line of work I do, I come across a lot of times where some of the most used browsers happen to be out of date. People aren't updating their browsers. And why do you update? It's for security. Again, some people like to look at updates and be like, oh, I got to update again. Oh, what's this update? I don't want to know. It's for security reasons. You should get on it. It's very important. All right. This next piece I think is going to be pretty interesting. Um, So what's new for ransomware in 2024? I find this interesting because as I work in cybersecurity, there's always newer things that come about. So security pros think a lot about ransomware, how to avoid it, what data they might uh, they manage that might be at risk, and what's the next slimy tactic they will need to contend with. In the year ahead, ransomware experts predict a shift in tactics and targets by criminals as cyber defenses get harder to bypass. They also warn that mobile endpoints will become more attractive targets uh, and that old bugs such as Log4j will continue to be springboards into networks for ransomware attacks. What follows is a roundup of experts chiming in on what to watch out for on how to build an effective ransomware prevention and mitigation playbook for 2024. 2024 ransom makeover? That's a question, right? Ransom will get more personal, says Kevin O'Connor, head of the research Adlaman. Be prepared to see more conniving ransom threats in the year ahead. Ransomware cooks are crooks, not cooks. Uh, Is that where they get the cookies from the cooks? But the crooks are using the data they steal in very calculated and sometimes personal ways to increase pressure on people and organizations into paying ransom. We've seen sensitive personal data about children stolen from school districts sent directly to the parents. We even saw the Black Cat Group recently report its own attack to the SEC as a pressure tactic. The days of ransomware groups simply encrypting data and demanding ransom are gone. Double extortion has become the norm. Groups are going for beyond just posting stolen data online. One example of how attacks are evolving comes from our uh, threat research team. I recently observed an instance where affiliates of the same ransomware as a service gang were simultaneously targeting the same organization. They were stepping over each other as one affiliate was focused on low and slow exfiltration in hopes of large data extortion payout, while the other affiliate came with a more smash and grab operation that helped to expose the first. But it shows just how prolific these threats can get. Amid midlife crisis, ransomware is heading for a makeover, says John Dwyer, head of research, IBM X Force. X-Force, that sounds awesome, and that's, I think, a Marvel thing, too. Ransomware may be facing a recession in 2024 as more countries pledge not to pay the ransom, and increasingly fewer enterprises succumb to the pressure of encrypted systems, choosing to divert funds to rebuilding systems versus decrypting systems. Ransomware operators are starting to face a cash flow problem, making it challenging to keep up with their resource-intensive campaigns. While we anticipate a bigger pivot to high-pressure data extortion uh, attacks, ransomware isn't going anywhere as we expect it to shift focus to a consumer or small business target base where threat actors' leverage remains strong. But considering that ransom demands against SMBs are likely to be smaller than enterprise victims, it's clear that ransomware is heading for a makeover. Rise of mobile ransomware, says J.T. Keating, SVP of Corporate Development, Zimperium. 
Another threat to be aware of in 2024 is mobile ransomware. Sometimes people are tricked into downloading mobile ransomware through social networking schemes because they think they are downloading innocent content or critical software. According to Zimperium's Global Mobile Threat Report, uh, it spotted a 51% increase in the total number of unique mobile malware samples detected year over year. It is reasonable to expect that to continue. So even though mobile phones have been a big deal for a while, a lot of times these attackers and groups are targeting enterprise systems that usually has to do with desktop workstations. <clears throat> but what seems to be the better move forward for these attackers is mobile. Mobile is has a lot of personal use to it. It's very easy for attackers to get try to get through a mobile phone to get the personal data they need to get the bigger fish. Um, so I can see why mobile would be a target. Um, yeah, keep your mobile phone up to date. Trend of not paying, says Michael DeBolt, Chief of Intelligence Officer, Intel 41. Yeah, countries agreed in 2023 at the counter ransomware initiative that government should not pay ransom. So by them not paying, uh, I guess is what's kind of pushed these attackers to go into different directions. Um, new and old threats to 2024. So the Log4j, that, that was an oldie, but it, it continues to exist as long as that is unpatched. So that's something to keep out for. Uh, cyber criminals will increasingly target account recovery methods. Ah, there you go. So when you need to recover your account, um, yeah, that's the way to target it. It reminds me of just recently. Um, I don't use Apple devices. I'm more of an Android guy or whatever, actually. I, I'm not about the closed ecosystem. The thing I learned with Apple devices is to really authenticate your account to do anything major, you need to have a phone number attached to an iOS device. I bought an Apple TV to play some Apple Arcade on my TV, and I don't own an iOS device with the phone number. My phone is an Android. So when I went to log into the Apple TV, and actually I can probably move on to the full screen and do my monologue. When I went to log on to the uh, Apple TV, it said, take your uh, iOS device that you currently have and just scan this or whatever, and you'll be logged in. But it needed to be a trusted device that had a phone number associated to it. So I didn't have that. And I, it just reminds me, I'm like, well, with other devices or other platforms or services, it, I don't need a phone number attached to a device in order to authenticate. And while that might seem like a way Apple is using to be more secure, to allow people not to get into their accounts, what that does is it's a treasure trove for, atta for yeah, attackers, for when they're like, okay, if we target an iOS user, we know that they're going to have to have their phone number attached to their main device that they're going to do all their personal work, personal um, stuff on, uh, just, and that's just a way to get all the data. That's why uh, it, it is known kind of in the cybersecurity circles that iOS devices are, you know, more risky to use than an Android device because since so many people use Android and it's open source and so many corporations are relying on it, they can build some very specified security controls for themselves that are the layer between yourself and whatever data they have. And it's not the Android device itself that's kind of in the middle collecting that data. With Apple, it's a little different. And it was interesting because I had an iOS device years ago and uh, it had a, in order for me to log into my account, I needed the MFA verification from the phone number, but I didn't have that. So I'm going through their customer support and they're just like, sorry, we can't help you. If you don't know what that phone number is, and you don't have that phone number currently, your account is gone forever. And I thought that is pretty crazy because that means I can't access this account out there that probably still has some of my data in there. And it was probably hacked because there's some other phone number associated with the MFA. So this is a mobile issue and I don't like Apple's approach to it, but what they're saying here for ransomware in the future is they're gonna go after these mobile devices. Um, so I think this is just a good kind of reminder to your personal mobile device, you need to treat it like it's in a prison. You need to keep it locked down, watch what you're downloading. Uh, be careful, you know, what you're accessing because no matter how safe you're trying to be, you never know what new 2024 uh, sort of attacks to go on from these hacker groups. So. Well, that is it for today's episode. Hope you found it interesting. Please comment below if, if you have any thoughts on what's going on in 2024. Do you have an iOS device versus Android device? Have you noticed any security differences between them that you have to deal with? Yeah, let us know in the comments below. And subscribe if you haven't. 
And uh, also like the video, share it around, let people know uh, about the world of cybersecurity, how they can keep themselves safe week by week as we uncover new threats. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching the Cyber Safety News Show here on the Safety News Network. I'm Adam Blue. We'll talk later.